Hey everyone, Micah here with eBike School, and today I'm going to give you my top five predictions for what is coming this year in the eBike industry. I'm not saying this is a guarantee, but I've been working in the eBike world for over a decade and a half now, and I've been pretty on for my last four or five years of making these yearly predictions. And at the end of this video, we're gonna go back and check my predictions from last year and see whether I was right or wrong. Also at the end of this video, I'm going to be giving away this e-bike, the Oh Wow Cycles Voltaic 500 Mini to one of you watching this video right now. So if you wanna see how you can win this awesome e-bike and learn a little bit more about it, make sure you stick around to the end of the video. All right, now let's get started with these predictions. Now, my first prediction is that 2025 is going to be the year of the e-bike regulations. Things are clamping down and they're going to clamp down significantly this year. That could come in several forms, but it seems like the higher speed, higher performance e-bikes are in the crosshairs of several states' legislative bodies. We've started to see some new laws from California. Uh, Utah's got something on the books. Oregon's looking at uh, fast e-bikes. California's looking at heavy e-bikes. We're talking about, you know, some serious ramping back of places where e-bikes can ride. Um, in some states, e-bikes being pushed onto the street out of the bike lane. In other states, e-bikes being pushed towards uh, registration, insurance, potentially licensing requirements, generally more on the higher performance end, like I was saying, whether that's out of class, you know, these sort of class four e-bikes that go faster than 28, whether that's uh, high speed throttle e-bikes, or uh, just some of these sort of like fake, not, not really e-bikes, but e-scooters and other things that try to masquerade under e-bikes, uh, or even Surons, Talaria, those type of electric dirt bike style bikes that have been masquerading under the e-bike name for several years. There's just gonna be a significant clamping down of, of those types of uh, shenanigans that have gone on for a while. That doesn't mean that the e-bike that you have is problematic. You know, you, you've probably got a fine, you know, class one, two, three, whatever e-bike, but folks that have been operating operating e-bikes that are on the, uh, the edge of what we would consider legal or in the gray area, you guys might start having some issues depending on how strict your states are gonna be. This is definitely more of a, a West Coast trend, but it's starting to sweep across the US and New York as well. We're starting to see some of that. So I think 2025 is gonna be a tough year for anyone who enjoys the, uh, the higher end of the e-bike performance spectrum. My next prediction is that we're going to see more of a shift of electric bike manufacturing out of China. I think there's gonna be significant pressure from a few directions, but the most important is the unknown of upcoming tariffs. Uh, I'm filming this video before the new administration is uh, being inaugurated. Hopefully I get it posted soon as well. Um, so we don't know if when uh, Trump comes in, he's gonna put some of these heavy tariffs on China that he's talked about. Uh, we've heard upwards of you know 35%, 60%. At one point he was saying two to 300% tariffs. No one knows really what's gonna happen yet, how that could affect the e-bike industry. But there are many companies that just don't want to, to have to plan around such uncertainty. And I think we're gonna see more of a push of manufacturing outside of China. That's gonna go to countries like uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, uh, somewhat Taiwan, uh, other countries where um, there's going to be a decent investment in factories, in the, uh, the labor that is needed to produce these things. I don't think we're going to see much manufacturing brought to the U.S., at least in terms of electric bicycles. I, I just see it spreading out more across Asia, but moving outside of China. We'll let this plane go by. Yeah, it's probably good. All right, the uh, third prediction I'm making for 2025 is we're still gonna see great pricing. 2024 was sort of the year of the e-bike sales, right? There were a lot of companies that had overstock situations still coming out of 2023. And I think a lot of that pressure is gonna continue to push into 2025. Uh, we're gonna continue to see these really impressive sales. Uh, we're gonna continue to see companies trying to get rid of the last of their um, you know, overstocks, trying to clear out shelves. We're probably gonna see some uh, interesting bikes introduced as well, which means there's continued pressure on companies to clear out old stock. Um, we didn't see as many new sort of fly-by-night companies enter the market in 2024 as we had in the past, so we don't have as much competition in that sense. But I think a lot of these just really, really good e-bike deals, e-bike sales that we saw last year are going to continue far into 2025. Now there is one exception there, and I'm going to reserve the right to um, withdraw that prediction if for some reason we get some, some 
crazy high tariffs imposed on electric bicycles this year. You know, if uh, we start seeing these 60% or 100% China tariffs, then suddenly a lot of those uh, e-bike deals are going to evaporate. But outside of something like that, you know, just shocking the industry, I think we're going to have uh, continued really good, good sale prices this year. Now, my fourth prediction, and I'm not as gung-ho about this, but I'm, I'm fairly confident enough to make it, is that we're going to see an increase in the number of e-bikes being available with tracking options, especially on the lower end. You know, it's not going to be limited to these four or five thousand dollar e-bikes anymore. We have seen a little bit of this. Velotrick has been great about including Apple Find My in their bikes. This is such a simple and uh, low cost technology that I have to imagine more companies are going to start adopting it. There are, of course, other competitors. Uh, there are similar technologies available. Those tile trackers, other trackers in the Android uh, ecosystem, as well as GPS tracking, of course, though that one generally requires some sort of um, either monthly subscription or you know yearly membership, that sort of thing. But I just, I have to imagine more companies are going to want to provide some sort of tracking now that a few have demonstrated that it's possible and that consumers really enjoy it. You know, we like being able to open our phone and say, all right, my bike is still where I parked it. So I, I really hope that's coming and I really hope that a year from now in my, my next prediction video, I can look back and say I got that one right. And my last prediction, and this one is kind of a sad one, I think we're gonna continue to see significant uh, e-bike bankruptcies, more companies closing down, uh, definitely you know, some big layoff rounds to come. The electric two-wheeler market was not kind to companies a year ago, and a lot of the factors that led to those closures are still in effect now. So uh, I think we're gonna see more, and unfortunately, we may see some big names closing this year as well. If not closing, then like I said, definitely going through more big layoff rounds, because there are a lot of companies that are on borrowed time. You know, They've got huge debt sheets. Some of these companies, I don't know how they're still operating with so much debt on the books, and there's only so long that their investors can keep bankrolling this stuff before they say, that's enough, I gotta cut my losses. So I'm, I'm hoping we don't see too many, but be prepared for several more closures, bankruptcies, um, receiverships, you know, all of that coming next year. All right, so that was a little sad, but now let's look back on my uh, 2024 predictions and see whether I was uh, on the mark or missed it entirely. Now, my first prediction is that we're gonna see more of a push into the lower, more budget end of the e-bike spectrum, but especially from the more bike shop brands, companies like Trek, Specialized, Cannondale, Giant, these kinds of companies are gonna continue pushing harder into this budget space. Okay, so I did not start off strong, I will give you that. Um, I really thought there was going to be more of a push into this. The Specialized Globe line, which was a really interesting push from, from a, a hand brand specialized into this low space, was sort of enigmatic of what I was expecting to see more of. But it was such a tough year for e-bike companies that I think that, you know, it just didn't result in the kind of investment in new brands, new models, that sort of thing that I thought was going to be coming. Now, my second prediction is that we're going to see some crazy sales and really great prices into the beginning and even through the middle of the year and into the riding season. Yeah, this one on the money. I mean, you know, throughout the beginning of the year, we, we saw decent prices, but then as 2024 progressed, more and more sales, definitely in riding season, and just crazy good deals. You know, a lot of companies were basically giving bikes away. You know, bikes that, that Rad was selling for like $2,000 were going for barely over 1,000, those kind of deals. So definitely just insane uh, e-bike deals throughout the year as companies were clearing out those shelves. Next, I think that we're unfortunately going to see a number of bankruptcies or just general closing down, winding down of a lot of e-bike brands. All right, so I know I kind of repeated that prediction this year, but last year it was definitely true. You know, the juice, the fuels, the, the cakes, all of those companies that uh, closed out last year. And uh, that one, like I said, it's, it's just gonna keep happening, unfortunately. Next, unfortunately, this is another sort of negative prediction, but I don't think we're gonna see any groundbreaking announcements on the e-bike space outside of maybe a few healthy companies. Yeah, that one was pretty much on the money as well. It's not that there weren't new e-bikes unveiled last year, there certainly were. But I just, I can't think of any that were just like groundbreaking or or that new. We saw a lot of just sort of refreshes, you know, there was like Electric had the, the Expedition 2.0, the Xpeak 2.0. Rad did unveil a couple of, of new bikes, nothing like crazy. I made a whole video about how, if anything, Rad's new bikes was just a return to form of a few years ago for them, which I thought was great because, you know, things had kind of gotten off course there. Um, but yeah, nothing radically new last year. There just, there wasn't uh, room in the market for investing in those kinds of, of 
big new launches. And lastly, and I think this is a positive prediction, I don't think we're gonna see any major crackdowns in terms of regulation on e-bikes in the US, at least not in 2024. Yeah, that one was true as well. There was nothing big that happened in 2024 in terms of crackdowns. At the very end of the year, that's when California passed that um, new regulation regarding redefining or you know, tightening the definition of class three e-bikes in the state, but that only took effect this year in 2025. So that's why I really think that, you know, 2025, now this is the year of the regulations. Whereas last year we saw almost nothing in terms of tightening on, on uh, e-bike performance regulations. We did see a little bit in terms of uh, more UL compliance requirements, that sort of thing, the, the safety, the fireproofing, that stuff. We saw a little bit, but this is the year where it really kicks in. All right, so those were my predictions for this coming year. I did pretty good last year. A year from now, let's check back and see how good I was. Uh, but now it is time for my favorite part of all of my videos. It is the e-bikes for good giveaway. This is a program I started to give free e-bikes to people in need, and I am super excited to be giving away this e-bike in this video. This is the Oh Wow Cycles Voltaic 500 Mini. So a huge thank you to Oh Wow Cycles. Make sure you go check them out. Oh Wow has a ton of interesting e-bikes. They have sort of normal e-bikes like these, but they also have a lot of really interesting e-trikes. Their Conductor Plus is awesome. I'm gonna be showing you guys more about that in the future, spoiler alert. Uh, but they have some really cool other rickshaws and big cargo tricycles, etc. Check them out. Huge thank you to them for being super generous and helping me give away this e-bike. Now let's talk about the 500 Mini. As you can see, it comes in olive drab, kind of this army green, and it's got this interesting moped frame. You know, it's got this really long bench seat here. It's called the 500 Mini, and that's because it's actually kind of small. Now I'm five foot seven or 170 centimeters, and it fits me well, but it's not a big bike. You know, it fits nicely in a garage, fits in an apartment, and it doesn't take up too much space. That being said, it's still got really good performance. That 500 watt motor back here, it's actually 873, I think, watts. So it's got a lot of peak power back there. Gets you up to 20 miles per hour easily. There is a throttle. So this is a true to form class two e-bike. You're not gonna have any issues with some of these tightened class three regulations because it is class two. It's got those uh, 180 millimeter uh, mechanical disc brakes. It has a, uh, Let's see, 11.6 amp hour battery. So at 48 volts, that's about 550 watt hours to get you around 30 miles or so of range on mixed pedal assist and throttle riding. Of course, less than the advertised range if you're only riding around on throttle. It's got that nice big display up here. Uh, headlight and tail light, that's a big 500 lumen headlight up front. Uh, less than the rear, of course, I think it's 50 lumen tail light. And you've got the option to add a bunch of racks and baskets. I've got those I'm gonna be uh, adding on here as well. I've really enjoyed these small diameter fat tires because you get that off-road ability. You know, of course you got the suspension fork up front, so you've got some suspension there, but you can ride in places like this. You know, you can go overlanding where there are no trails. You're just riding through, you know, dirt and grass and sand and that sort of thing. Or you can take it on the, the streets and the bike lanes and ride it like a more typical, you know, commuter hybrid style bike. So for me, these 20 inch but fatter tires are that sort of perfect middle ground because I get the sort of small, nimble, easy to ride bike, but I uh, don't have such a big, heavy, sluggish wheel at the same time. Those 26 inch fat tires, you know, there's a lot of rubber there. They take more to turn, they're heavier. So this is a nice compromise for me. I think this is gonna be a great bike for someone who needs a way to get around. And if that is you, then listen up. If you are someone who you would love to have this bike, but it's just not in the cards for you, it doesn't fit into your budget, you're on a fixed income, um, whatever the reason is, but an e-bike would make a huge difference in your life, it would help you get around, visit family, get to work, go to the grocery store. If you need a form of transportation and this could be it, then let me know. I want you to head on over to my website. It is ebikeschool.com slash ebikes for good. That's a page where I have a uh, entry form. You can let me know your situation. There's um, no charge, there's no fee. You don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to pay for anything. It's just like a, a web form to let me know uh, why it is that an e-bike would change your life for the better. Among the deserving entrants, I'm going to randomly choose one person who will be the winner of this e-bike. For this time, it is limited to the uh, 48 contiguous states. Sometimes I try to uh, work with a uh, manufacturer that's able to, to ship outside of the US. Um, 
but for this time it will be limited to the uh, 48 US states. Like I said, a huge thank you to Oh Wow Cycles for helping me give away this awesome Voltaic 500 Mini. I think it's gonna be an awesome e-bike for someone in need. And if you are someone who likes the bike but you aren't necessarily in such a, a tough situation, then I recommend going on over to uh, Oh Wow and, and checking it out because I've just had a blast riding this thing and I'm sure you would too. Now it is time to announce the winner of the e-bikes for good giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected deserving entrant is... Tim L. So congratulations. I'm excited to get that e-bike out to you and uh, make sure anyone watching this video now that wants a chance to win this Voltaic 500 Mini from OWL Cycles, fill out the form at ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood and I hope to be reading your name at the end of my next video. Now, last but not least, it's time to announce the winner of the book giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter who will win a free copy of one of my books is... Melinda Allenson. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you gotta do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't wanna wait that long to hopefully win a copy of one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you here next time. All right, I got a little light left, let's go have some fun.